1790, the enumerators were told to tell race by skin complexion, as the record keepers assumed that the indigenous people of North America had all died or gone west. There had to be a category for these people that were left over. The category of convenience was free mulatto. Slightly more careful record keeping used the alternative term free persons of color when classifying. As land on the eastern shores were taken from the indigenous people of North America, the statue of free persons of color changed to color in the 1800s. Also, in those census records, census takers were told to list Mexicans or Hispanics as white. Through racism and land theft, the darker-skinned people were presumed to be enslaved Africans. Looking at the historical records of Europeans and their descriptions unveiled the fraud of this perception. In 1619, John Brown, the first English explorer, described the color of the people when he landed on the eastern shore of America in Jamestown, Virginia. He described Powhatan, the Algonquin chief. He had encountered to look more like a devil, he states, with some 200 or more men I've as never black been here before. as oh, himself. Place. Did you just move here? Or? Oh no, I've lived here for a while. Where are you from? Florida. No, but like, where are you from from? So West Palm Beach, which is like an hour away from Miami. I think you're misunderstanding my question. Where are you from? Oh, I know what you mean. Florida. All right, um, where are your parents from? Florida. What about your parents' parents? Florida. Where are your grandparents' parents from? Florida. So you're from Haiti. Florida. Jamaica. Florida. Suriname. Florida. Where are your people from? My people. Your people. My people? Your people. My people. Where are your people from? Oh, my people. <laughs> on the left is Denise, and on the right is Delon. He's actually from Minnesota, which is one of people in Minnesota. Not this. This is not what I'm asking. Oh. Where are you from originally? Where am I from originally? Where are any of us from originally? Let's go back to the very beginning, the Big Bang. The universe is a high density speck expanding across- No, 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 uh, not like that. So I'm one quarter German, and then I'm actually five thirteenths Native American, tribe of the Cherokee. You're Native American? I'm Halawasapone and Tuscarora, Sakoa, Quasi. What clanship are you from? My entire family is in the clan, and um, I'm a Hasakosa Sasas as well. Oh, you're not from America. Where are you from? Originally. I'm American, all right? My relatives came over on the Mayflower. You're from England. You want to give this young lady a hard time about where she's from? Enjoy your lattes. Chap. Why are you so concerned with putting me in a box? I mean, it was really hard for me to share with you that I'm from Florida. The one drop rule meaning that, you know, one drop of black blood makes you black. You know, that was to keep as many people oppressed or, you know, legitimize their oppression um, as possible. But on the other side, one drop of anything else completely dilutes you as, an, as a native person. So if you're a native person, you have a one drop of something else, then suddenly you're less native. So it's the opposite. Traditionally, within the Apache society, you go by the mother. And if the mother's recognized as Apache, she has her clan, uh, the children are unquestionably Apache. Not in the American context, not when patriarchy trumps matriarchy. So what does that mean? My sisters are short 1 16th of a degree. What does that mean? Does that mean their pinkies aren't Apache? What does that mean? You know, being a mixed race person is a whole nother side of it, but that's a very common experience in our tribe. So it's not as if we're unusual in that way. What is unusual is the admixture of black. My grandfather actually doesn't want people, if he, if he hears that somebody from the tribe is coming over, he won't come out of his room because he doesn't want them to know that he's that complexion that he doesn't, I guess he doesn't want me to be affiliated with, with having African American blood, but I mean, I say it. it, it's not gonna change anything. If it were up to the American government, natives wouldn't be around because after a certain time that blood will dilute it will go out and so if there's no native peoples to provide benefits then we're not obligated to meet these treaty rights and if we're not obligated to meet these treaty contracts then the land is available the resources are available because however 
Much America strays away from the ideals of justice. The goal of America is freedom. Abused and scorned though we may be, our destiny is tied up in the destiny of America. Before the Pilgrim Fathers landed at Plymouth, we were here. Before Jefferson etched across the pages of history the majestic words of the Declaration of Independence, we were here. Before the beautiful words of the Star-Spangled Banner were written, we were here. And for more than two centuries, our forebears labored here without wages. They made cotton king. They built the homes of their masters in the midst of the most humiliating and oppressive conditions. And yet out of a bottomless vitality, they continue to grow and develop.